In one of our Bible studies, we've been talking about the Sermon on the Mount, and, and the person moderating the talk said, when you think of a genius, who's the first person that comes to your mind? And everybody put their word in. Einstein's usually the first one that most people think of. What about Jesus? He was the smartest person who ever lived. But somehow he's been made out in the movies and in all the ways we think of him as, as some kind of spiritual spooky guy that said things that people didn't understand. No, see, you've got to dig in. You've got to get in that hiding place of glory and the Lord will reveal it to you. And then he will show you how to apply it in the lives of the people that you're interacting with. Every one of them, every person you interact with is a gem to the Lord. Because they were made in his image. It's really hard. Well, this teaching in, in the uh, class that we run, the possessing your vessel, bitter root judgments, uh, those of you that remember that one, it's very difficult. We, we make inner vows. We have bad things happen to us, and we make statements in the inside of our spirit, and we say, I will never let that happen again. I will never be like my father. I will never be like my mother. I will never trust a man or a woman, however you got hurt. Well, guess what? You become the very thing you say you'll never be by the power of sowing and reaping because you defiled something that God holds in high value, and many times we have to repent of our judgments against people. All right, that's a different day's teaching. But if Jesus is the, it says the exact expression of God's true nature, and Holy Spirit is his nature inside of us, right? And it even says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. So this is not a ghost. Holy Ghost, that's one of the translations. The spiritual aspect of it is powerful, but the exact expression was in Jesus. Part of that is in you. So he wants us to be exact expressions of his nature. It's amazing, isn't it, that this God that has no limits puts himself in a limited structure and empowers us to do things that are supernatural. Let your kingdom come today, Lord. Let your will be done here on earth through my life as it is in heaven. And then the other way it's written in New English translation says the sun is the radiance of his glory and the representation of his essence. I love that word essence. The picture I got is when you boil, if you're a chef and you boil down everything in the pot, the essence is what's left, right? You strip away all the outside stuff. I heard somebody describe a marathon like that. A marathon, when you're in that 17th mile and you're just about to die of a heart attack, you think, right, you haven't caught your second wind yet and you're stripped of everything you thought was important and this is the real you that's left now. That's Jesus on the cross. Everything else has been stripped away and he's only got a few minutes left and he says, Father, forgive them. That's the essence of who he is. He was human. He could have sinned, could have held resentment and bitterness. No, the essence of who he is is forgive them. They know not what they do. Oh, that's in us. And he said in the last days, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. That's worth thinking about. Because that person who's yelling at you and raging at you, I think you might have heard me say in, in New York City one time, I was on the elevator, and this guy got in, in the elevator, and he was having a really bad day. And it was an older guy, I think it was in a medical building, and he had gone to the doctor, and he was like, yeah, you stupid, burp, burp. you know, like he was just having a bad day. And he was a little shorter than me, and he looked up at me, he goes, man, he was just giving me a hard time. I never met him, it was on elevator, the door's open, and this guy walks in. You know, and you want to think, like, he's demon-possessed, but I just got compassion for him. <laughs> That's what the Lord will do. And I just smiled at him, I tried anyway. I smiled at him and said, man, it looks like you're having a really bad day. Can I pray for you? <laughs> and it just disarms that thing. Because that's not what they're expecting, right? They're expecting to be iron and iron going against each other. Mm -mm. The Holy Spirit works in us in every transaction if we ask him to. Ha! So he's the exact expression of God's essence living inside of me. So I could ask my wife at the end of the day, how did I express his essence in my behavior to you? And she could say, well, how much time do you have? 
She took notes. <laughs> Part of it is giving the person permission to speak into your life and not get defensive about it, right? It's one of the best things you could have somebody do for you, speak truth into your life. So here's some of the different words. Holy Spirit, the exact expression and essence of God. Pneuma, it's breath. That's a hot topic these last, what, 14 months? Breath? <laughs> the breath of God. That's what so resonated with me when you gave that word earlier today during prayer, when it's essential. The breath is essential or you can't live. And the, the breath of God in your conversations is essential or your relationships won't live. Because you'll say things out of that carnal side of your nature, that fleshly side of your nature. And you can only control your half of the equation. You can't control what the other people do or say to you, but you sure can control what you say and what you do. And Kathy came up and gave a word that she got. Was it in a dream, I think you said, right? About essential. Coming in the car, so it was more of a vision. And... Uh, Boy, that's so true. Every person is essential, all right? Even if they are on the wrong party, political party, or it's a family member giving you a hard time about something, what we're going to have to do is give an account someday for how we treated them. And then if they didn't respond to what we did, that's one thing. But if we didn't even try, then God would say, you know, I thought you said you valued these people. If every person is made in the image of God, then they could express my essence too. But you gave up on them. And I'm not putting a guilt trip on anybody. I'm saying this really matters to God. We have to love what he loves. And he loves people more than anything because we're the only thing made in his image and filled with his spirit. And why we talk about this on the Sanctity of Life Day is because that birthing process is a miracle. And we're the only ones that can birth new creation in God's image. So no wonder the devil wants to wipe it out. No wonder people are committing suicide. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came to give us life abundantly. Life, eternal life. You can experience the eternal life now because you're, you're inviting the essence of God's presence into your life. You're a partaker of the divine nature when you're a Christian. But if you don't access it, if you're not intentional, which would include prayer for sure, and say, Lord, I recognize, I'm on my knees because I recognize in my strength it's not going to turn out well today. Even though I'm a Christian, there's still a deceitful part of my heart that will try to creep in. So I'm going to be intentional, Lord, to do it your way today.